The multiplier is an expression of the mysterious fact that usually an increase in government spending or investment spending, if that is the cause, the effect of an increase in government spending or investment spending is to raise real output by something more than the original increase in government spending or investment. So that, for instance, a $10 billion increase in government spending or investment may lead to a $50 billion increase in real output. That's the mystery. Why is the multiplier something like 5 and not 1? That's our question. Why do you get extra bang for your buck? And there are a couple different ways to look at this. One, intuitively, is to say that the money gets spent more than once. If the government decides to spend money building roads, the road gets built. That's an increase in output. But the money received by the road crews that they say spend on pizza if they buy more pizza, more pizza is produced. That's an increase in output, too. And then if pizza chefs buy gasoline, if pizza chefs run out and take some of their increased income and buy gasoline with it, more gasoline is produced and sold. And all of this will add up the total change in output is the increase in road construction plus the new pizza plus the new gasoline and on and on and on. Now to look at it more precisely we can look at it algebraically and say the increase in output is equal to the total increase in C plus I plus G and so what we have is an increase in G of 10 billion dollars and then if, for example, the MPC is equal to 0.8, then the road crews have $10 billion more in income, and they go out and spend 80% of that that in turn is new income for pizza chefs. And the pizza chefs will spend 80% of 80% of the original 10 billion which is 6.4 and so these terms will eventually MPC, MPC times MPC, MPC to the N, they will sum. The sum of all these terms will be the original increase in government spending times 1 over 1 minus the MPC. Therefore, the multiplier which is the ratio between the increase in Q and the increase in G that caused it is equal to 1 over 1 minus the MPC. You're not responsible for knowing that proof, but there it is. Now, yet another way to look at it is graphically. This is something, again, you're not responsible for knowing the details of, but here it is. The consumption function, as posited by Keynes, is this graph. Total spending, aggregate expenditure, C plus I plus G, forgetting about exports for now, is seen as an upward sloping function of Q with a positive y-intercept. CO is called autonomous consumption, what you would spend even if your income was zero. The slope of this line is the MPC. Because by definition, The MPC 
ABC is the ratio between an increase in consumption and the increase in income that caused it. If you add on to this graph what's called the 45 degree line, it allows you to see the point, allows you to draw a series of squares essentially. It tells you that that's a square. Therefore, at Q1, consumers are spending all of their income. That's where the consumption function crosses the 45 degree line. C1 is equal to Q1. Nobody is saving anything. All of national income is being spent. That's not terribly interesting in itself, but it becomes more interesting if we add a couple new things. Let's look here. Let's say that investment and government spending are independent of Q. That's a fancy way of saying that no matter what the level of Q, investment spending stays the same. No matter what the level of Q, government spending stays the same. If that's true, I grant those are strong assumptions, but if it's true, then Given original consumption function, we can just add I plus G if that's the level of investment, which stays constant. How about G for green for government? Now, the green line shows us, it's like a layer cake, consumption plus some constant level of investment on top of that, plus some constant level of government spending on top of that, and once again, the 45 degree line. Now, this point gets more interesting. That is now the point Q star is the equilibrium level of income because that's where C plus I plus G is equal to Q where the desired spending what consumers and firms and the government want to buy is equal to actual output of the economy. So keep that in mind. We can simplify it this way. Now all we have to consider is our C plus I plus G curve, which intersects at Q star. Improve my dots here. That's a little more interesting because this allows us to see the multiplier in action. If investment and government spending rise, the increase in, I let's say this is an increase in government spending, is visible here, that distance. But the resulting increase in government spending, excuse me, in total output, this is the change in Q. Q2 is larger. Here's the increase in government spending. Here's the increase in output. And you can see right here just why it is the case. Concentrate on this triangle. On this triangle, that distance is the change in Q, which must be equal to this distance must also be the change in Q. Why? Because of the 45 degree line. That's an equilateral triangle. The change in Q can in turn here be divided up. This distance is the increase in government spending. 
because it's the vertical distance between the two curves. The vertical distance here must be equal to the vertical distance here. But what's the rest of it? What's the rest of this here? This is the increase in consumption that was caused by the increase in government spending. Now you're sliding up along the consumption function. Or to be precise, this is the induced increase in consumption. So you can see on this graph the increase in G that got things started, but you can also see the increase in consumption. And you can see, finish it off, that if the increase in output is equal to the increase in government spending plus the increase in consumption that was induced, then the increase in output must be greater than the increase in government spending that caused it. Therefore, the multiplier, which is the ratio of delta Q to delta G, must be greater than 1, because the thing on top is bigger than the thing in the bottom. That's a wrap.